Gorgeous morning. Thank you all for giving up a little bit of the prettiest morning so far this spring to come and uh, talk about veggies. I always have to ask, how many people are here for the first time? Wow. How many people are, how many people are your first seminar as well? A lot of folks do. Okay. One more question. How many of you all have a garden now? Okay. So a few of you all just interested in getting started. How many people pick something out of their garden either this morning or last night? Very good. The rest of you, if you come again next year, I want to see everybody's hand go up. I mean, I left at 3.15 this morning. I did not pick anything out of my garden this morning, but yesterday I picked spinach and mustard for some of the folks around here. The day before I gave a friend that came over some heads of broccoli. One of our other employees brought in a bunch of radishes a little bit earlier this week. If you grow a good garden, there should be something you can pick out of your garden every single day of the year. And if you enjoy fresh, you know, veggies and leafy vegetables and root vegetables, and for some of us, I mean, a garden is a tomato patch, basically. But there is a whole lot of other material that you can certainly grow. And I think we're probably warm enough. Let me turn this off so nobody gets burned. Um, Sit on a stair or crowd in. It's a chilly morning. Everybody can sit close together. But anyway, my intent... Oh, I see some spaces kind of up and to the right if you want to go crawl over a few folks. Um, what I want to do this morning is talk a little bit about the basics of gardening, things that you need to know regardless of what you're going to grow, and then we'll talk about some hints on specific different crops and things. I promise over the years that I've grown a garden, I've made probably every mistake that could possibly be made. And for those of y'all that are new here, we do have a few ground rules. Number one, there's no such thing as a dumb question. If you have a question you think is a dumb question, probably half the people in here would like an answer to it. So ask, and don't hesitate to stop me if I'm unclear on anything. If it's something I'm going to cover in a few minutes, I'll put you off for a few minutes. If it's something that's appropriate, I'll stop and answer it right then. I think there are a few more spots up here. Thank you. Sorry we understand that. There's no such thing as late. You just weren't quite as early as everybody else. <laughs> Come on in there, places around. The other thing is that there's this uh, little game that we play. If you have something going on that you don't want to admit is happening in your own yard or your own garden, <laughs> You simply stick up your hand and say, my neighbor couldn't come this morning, but he or she wanted me to ask you this. So we'll know what's going on, but if it makes you feel any better, you know, feel free to do so. But what are the good things you need to grow a really good garden? Number one, you need lots of sunlight. That is simply the most important thing. There is no substitute for sunlight. If you don't have enough sunlight, move. If you can't move, get a chainsaw and cut down those trees or the, whatever is keeping the sunlight from hitting the area. But in all truth, um, it does take good sun to grow most of the things that we want to eat. Now, you don't necessarily even have to have a garden per se. There are a lot of these things that can be mixed into flower beds. Many herbs are absolutely wonderful ornamental plants as well. Basil makes one of the prettiest green annuals that you could ever imagine. And there's nothing wrong with mixing, gosh, peppers. How many people have chili pekins growing in their landscape intentionally or otherwise? You can mix other things in. And even if you don't have a lot of space in the ground, uh, Donna, our come on in, wonderful person who puts a lot of things together, put together some pots sort of like this. And while this pot is pretty, it also has several lettuces mixed in here that you could harvest from over a substantial period of time. Pansies are edible as flowers, as are calendulas, as there are lots of different things you can do. You can garden in containers. Uh, if your dog chews up everything that's down at ground level, grow a garden in hanging baskets. Granted, you're not going to pick 500 pounds of tomatoes like I plan to, but you'd be amazed how many things you can grow um, in, in hanging baskets or in containers of one sort or another. But whatever you're growing needs to have good sunlight. 
you need to have reasonable soil. Now very few people in this area start out with good soil. I mean here our soil is either non-existent or lousy. But you can take soil and turn it into better soil mainly through the addition of organic material and also through the addition of literally life. The life we put into the soil, the microbes we put into the soil in terms of beneficial bacteria and fungi. The things that build organic material more than anything else are things that you can't see. The greatest amount of what we call biomass, organic material in the soil, is built by bacteria. Bacteria individually are tiny, but they reproduce at the rate of about a new generation every, teen, every 17 minutes or something like that. So just by encouraging the microbial activity in the soil, you're going to get you know, your soil better and better and better, and consequently your garden is going to get better and better and better over the years. Are insects a problem? There may be a few here and there, but the better the soil is, the better your organic techniques are, the fewer insects that you will see in the garden, and the ones that you will see are usually fairly easily controlled. The same thing is true for most diseases. Truly, in an organic garden, I mean, I grew up in the chemical world. I started out chemical gardening, but I can promise you, in an organic garden, you spray about a tenth as much as you ever did before, and if you prepare the soil properly, it's just you're not going to have many problems that are difficult to solve. So you need good light, you need good soil, you need to plant at the right season. That is one of the most common mistakes that people make is planting things at the wrong time of year. And like I say, there should be something you can harvest from your garden every single day of the year. But we have things that grow in cool weather, we have things that grow in warm weather, we have things that grow in hot weather. You don't want to plant your hot weather crops too early. And some of the hot weather crops include things like okra and eggplant and even peppers to some extent. Those are things that you know we won't be planting again probably for at least six or maybe even eight weeks. We have warm season plants that we will plant as soon as we're past the danger of a hard freeze. And don't ask me when the last freeze is going to be. <laughs> Years ago, when I first moved to this area, I worked with an incredible gentleman up in the hill country, Alton Grimm. Some of y'all that have been around a lot of years, you know, might have the pleasure of knowing Alton. He came by and we visited. He's the guy I gave the broccoli to two days ago. Alton is a real inspiration to all of us. I mean, the man was given six months to live with cancer 31 years ago, I think. So, anyway, it's a proof of the power of a positive attitude and a good outlook and all. But, um... You know, I used to, when I worked with Alton, people would come in and say, Mr. Grimm, when is it going to freeze? And it'd look him in the eye and it'd say, when it gets to 32 degrees. So, when is the last freeze we're going to have? The last day it gets to 32. That's the last day we're going to have a freeze. Cool weather plants, we plant both in the fall and in the spring. Some of them that grow and produce quickly, we can still be planting cool weather plants right now. Some of them that take a longer period of time to produce, we have to plant those in the fall. So, I want to talk a little bit about soil preparation and things like that, and then we're going to go through pretty much crop by crop, in whatever order you guys want to, uh, and talk about some of the secrets to being very successful with uh, all the different things that you grow in this area. So, we're going to have good light, we're going to have good soil, we're going to plant at the right season with the right varieties. Of course, that's not nearly as much of an issue because uh, you can always find somebody to advise you on good varieties. <coughs> but once you've decided, once you've decided that this particular plot of ground is going to be where you grow your garden, what are we going to do to improve the soil? I think there's some spots if you don't mind crawling over or some spots around here. <coughs> Again, it, everybody stays a little bit warmer. The bigger the crowd gets, the closer we sit together and uh, the warmer it gets. Ma'am? Okay, the things that you need in your garden to grow a good garden are organic material and good nutrients. There's some things that we add something a little extra to, like in the case of tomatoes, we add Epsom salts because it stops blossom end rot, but we'll talk about that when we talk about tomatoes. But... Um, the basically the two things you need are plenty of organic material and plenty of good fertilizer. Now, as your garden gets better year after year after year, you can pretty much stop adding organic material or add just a little bit of organic material. 
The problem with organic material in the soil is so much of it has been burned out by chemical fertilizers. Years ago, we'll use the Rio Grande Valley for an example. Years ago, most of the soils in the Rio Grande Valley had about 6% organic material in it. Everybody knows we grew the best citrus in the world, we grew wonderful spinach, we grew just all kinds of incredible crops. Well.